Good morning. Uh, good morning, good morning. This is Dr. Adi Adebanjo of Ambassade International welcoming you to another episode of Ambassade Live. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Uh, on this beautiful, beautiful Friday, it's the 13th of January, 2023. We're almost halfway through the first month of the year already, but I tell you what, it's a glorious year that God has given us. It's a privilege to be alive this year, and uh, it's a pleasure to bring you the word of God this morning. Um, my wife, Vusola, will join us in just a minute, uh, but we... we we are mandated by God to bear his name to the nations and to restore dignity to humanity. That's what we've been doing as a ministry for the past 25 plus years. Uh, but through this medium, Ambassade Live, we bring forth the, uh, the relevant word of God, on time word of, from God to his people. Uh, that's what we aim to do seek the lord and speak his word uh the the word is so important to us and uh we we value the word of god very highly we we place it it, it occupies a very uh high um a preeminent place in our lives and i believe it should in the life of every believer uh and so we uh through ambassade live we come to teach the word of god to equip the saints, like the Bible says, so that they can do the works of the ministry, fulfill the call of God upon their lives, be all, basically, that God has called you to be. We thank you for joining us this morning. Ambassador Live airs every Friday morning, 8 a.m. Central USA time. That's 9 a.m. Eastern. Um, that's currently, that's uh, 2 p.m. In, in UK, 3 p.m. in Nigeria, and 7.30 p.m. in India. And I mention those places because we have people joining us from uh, those parts of the world. I just saw my mom log on, actually from the UK. Uh, good morning, uh, mom. Thank you for joining this morning. And uh, on Facebook Live, I see uh, some friends from India uh, joining uh, on Instagram live it's so good to see you thank you for taking time to join us today and um, we encourage you to uh, let others know share uh, share this with uh, others that you believe can benefit from the Word of God uh, start a watch party if you're able to uh, on uh, on Facebook uh, but or share this feed uh, let your friends let your groups know uh, so they can join and partake of this uh, time in God's Word. But once again, it's a pleasure to to have you with us this morning. And, um, uh, you know, it's just a joy to uh, to bring the Word of God to you this morning. Uh, my prayer today is that you will not leave this time the same way you came into it, that you will hear something, no matter how long you stay with us. My prayer is that you stay with us to the end of the message, because it's it's a very important powerful message but for however long you're able to stay with us this morning that you will hear something that will spark something inside you and that will do a work in you so that you can manifest in this earth as a child of god that's part of what i'm going to talk about um thanks for joining us live if you're unable to stay with us all through or maybe you uh, you know want to watch this later you can always connect with us on, through our uh, different social media outlets or platforms. Uh, there's Facebook uh, where we stream this live. You can go back and watch the videos uh, there. We also have Instagram where we also stream it live. You can go back and watch the um, uh, the video later on as well. But we, you can go to our YouTube page as well. Uh, our YouTube page is Adi and Busola Adibanjo. You can go there and uh, you can see uh, this video, uh, which will be uploaded uh, shortly after this message, or videos from previous teachings. There's there's so much resource on that page to to build you up, to 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 clue you into what God is saying. And so, uh, please uh, take advantage of that. Um, 
God bless you. Thank you for joining this morning. Um, before I go on, uh, I just want to mention to you uh, about my book, The House That Prayer Built. Uh, it's a book I wrote, um, I, think, I think it's co uh, a couple of years, now, 2021. And um, it's a joy to be able to present that to you. Uh, it's a book on prayer, the house that prayer built. The premise is that uh, we are the house of God. Uh, and God, Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. And so if you connect the dots, uh, God is building us up. We are God's building under construction. And prayer is an indispensable part of that building project. Prayer helps us stay connected with the architect, the builder and maker of all things. The Bible says the builder and maker of all things is God. And so if your life, your family, your business, your, your future is going to be built according to God's will and purpose, you must learn to engage with God in the place of prayer. And that's what this is. talks about what prayer is. Basically, it simplifies, demystifies uh, this thing called prayer to where you can pray. Every single person who uh, is a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, a child of God, you can pray because it's just having a conversation with your heavenly Father. Please check this out. It's available on Amazon. Um, it's also available on our publisher's website. That's store.bookbaby.com. And available in all the um, online retailers where books are sold. You can check it out and get one for yourself. Buy one for somebody else as well. And be blessed by this in the name of Jesus. Thank you uh, this morning. We'll check it out. I'll, I'll mention this again after the broadcast uh, so you can uh, avail yourself with that. And before we go on, uh, here's Busola to just come and greet us. And encourage us with a, a quick exhortation uh, before we get into the word this morning. Praise God. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us this morning and being here. Um, it's always a joy to know that there are people on the other side listening to us. God has a treat for you. Um, so I encourage you to open up your heart and be expectant to receive what the Lord has. My husband has been waiting on the Lord and trusting him for a good one. He doesn't want me to say that, but it's the truth. And I believe God will honor that and that you will be blessed. Um, I'd just like to just um, encourage us quickly this morning with just a quick word. Just one minute. He's like, why you're looking at taking, a, bringing out a notebook? Well, I will try not to be too long. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that means, right? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, Praise God. I guess, you know, um, what I just want to encourage us to say is that this year, as we live our lives, it's important for us to be intentional about our relationships and make a choice and a decision to be the Jesus in every relationship you are in. What do I mean? To choose to do the right thing, to choose to do what you would expect the other person to do to you. And even when you don't see that happening, for you to not focus on what they are not doing, what they're supposed to be doing that they are not doing, or what they said that they shouldn't have said, but rather for you to focus on what you should do and for you to not focus on the things that they've said that are not okay or that are not right. And um, Philippians in chapter two, I'll just read verses three and verse four. It says, Philippians chapter two, verses three and four, and I'll read from the, well, let me read from the Message Bible. It'll probably take a few minutes. Um, I'll read from the Message Bible. It says, if you've gotten anything at all out of fellowshipping um, Christ, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being 
in a community of the spirit means anything to you if you have a heart if you care then do me a favor agree with each other love each other be deep spirited friends don't push your way to the front don't sweet talk your way to the top put yourself aside and help others get her head don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand i have a lot on my note but i'm not going to go over everything you will get a chance (laughs) but just to give you just to whet your appetite a little bit so you can come back for the next time i have to talk about that some of the things that you are supposed to do is that you have to make a decision to agree with the other person even if they don't want to even if they 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 choose otherwise do work the best you can in your ability to make a good choice you have to make a decision to love make a decision to be deep spirited friend help the other get ahead and what are some of the things you're not supposed to do okay and what are some of the things you're not supposed to do don't push your way to the front or sweet talk your way to the top don't do, do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit so don't do anything about trying to advance your cause and your way about trying to put yourself ahead to say oh um I just want to do things in my best interest. I want this to work or I want that to work. Just thinking about you without thinking about the interest of the other person, without thinking about how the other person feels. Put the other person's thoughts, feelings, emotions into consideration as you act and as you behave and as you make your decision. When you do that, you're being more like Jesus. It's not an easy thing to do by any means if I must encourage you and help you because i've been there and i am there amen it's not but with the help and with the grace of god we can do this we just have to choose to say you know what i'm going to do to the other person what i want them to do to me and every time a challenge you know faces you and you're wondering can i do it will i do it yes you can jesus did it and the more you do that the more your flesh dies and the more your spirit man is stronger and before long even the other person will change and they'll start to do what you are doing because they will see like oh wow this person is actually being nice to me they're being gracious they're being intentional about the way they are relating to me so what am i saying to us today let's be intentional in 2023 about every relationship that we have choosing to be the eye and the feet of jesus to be his ambassador and his true representative in every way and 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 in every opportunity that comes to us come back next time i'll talk about that sometime yeah we look forward to that then you can have all the time (laughs) and not take some of my time (laughs) praise god but it's a joy to uh to be able to bring forth these words we believe the holy spirit is orchestrating this somebody needed to hear that this morning and i hope you receive that and you will run with it and you will do with it uh what i'm about to teach you uh this morning uh from the word of god once again welcome thanks for joining us on ambassade live friday mornings 8 a.m central 9 a.m eastern uh 2 p uh 2 p.m in uh 2 p.m. in the UK, 3 p.m. in Nigeria, 7.30 p.m. in India. Uh, wherever you are in the world, please mark your calendars, note the time, and make this part of your weekly schedule. I promise you will be blessed because the Word of God will come with fire. And I have a word for you this morning. Please, if you can, stay on. Please stay on. There's a word that is issuing forth from the heart of God that you need to hear. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, I believe it's going to make uh, an impact in your life that will affect uh, the trajectory of your life this year. I can say that to you. Uh, I, I know that from, I have inside information about that. And so thanks for joining us. Share this feed. Uh, let other people know that, uh, you know, this is on. They can benefit from this. They can come. I see people already on. Like I said, we're live on Instagram. I see a lot of my 
your friends from India uh, logged on on Instagram and uh, we're also live on Facebook where I see quite a number of others as well Pastor Fred Chain from New Jersey God bless you it's Hi, good to Pastor see you. Fred and Sister um, Mary um sister sister ivania castillo from uh, nicaragua oh my god so good to see you sis god bless you and your family that's a precious sister that i met on uh, one of our mission trips to uh bluefields nicaragua uh god bless you sis god bless you sister uh, ivania thanks for being here today and our moms are here uh my mom uh Tumbadi banjo all the way from the uk Good morning, mommy. Good to see you. Love you. And my mom, uh, Moron Kesha Oniku, right here in Katy, Texas, live from Katy. Good morning, mama. <laughs> Good to see you. Love you. Thanks for joining. Praise God. Thank you all. Uh, for and joining. for everyone that is online that we can't see because yeah. you didn't put a comment. So we don't know that you're online. We appreciate you. We say thank you for taking time to be here today. It's not time wasted. Like I always say, it's time invested and it's going to bear fruit in your life. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Doesn't my wife look beautiful today? She always does. <laughs> she brightens up the camera. I'll tell you a secret. That's one of the reasons, well, not just one of the reasons why I always like her to come on with me at the beginning <laughs> is because, you know, she just brightens up, brightens up the camera. I mean, people, people want to watch the video because they see her. <laughs> <laughs> no i believe they want to watch because they they want to hear the word of god but i thank god for blessing me with a beautiful wife uh i thank god for his faithfulness to us over the years as we continue to serve him and i thank god for you as well that you continue to uh, hunger and thirst after the things of god to diligently seek the lord and the bible promise god promises that he rewards those who diligently seek him so get ready for a reward this morning in the name of jesus and i bet you all are very thankful for my amazing handsome husband there's no one else that competes with him gq magazine oh, come sure. on he'll stand there and he'll slay it sure, right off sure. but not just that <laughs> he's an amazing man seeking the face of god diligently week upon week day upon day to bring a word to bless you and to help you along in your journey with God. So I just wanted to appreciate it this morning. Hallelujah. See, thank you, Pastor Brother, Reverend Doctor, and all the other names. Amen. Addy, <laughs> my own one and only. Praise God. Thank for being here. Appreciate you. Love you, babe. Thank you. Thank you, babe. <laughs> thank God for his grace uh, that makes all this possible. Let's start with a word of prayer this morning and then we will dive right into the word. I don't want to hold you longer than I should. Father, in the name of Jesus. We are so grateful for another day that you have made. What an, another day to be alive, another day to show forth the glory of God, another day to receive from the Lord. Thank you, Father God, for uh, your presence with us always. You never leave nor forsake us. Thank you that you are committed to us. Lord God, you are inexorably tied to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. We're so grateful for Jesus our Savior, Redeemer. Thank you, Jesus, for saving us, for, for giving us eternal life, and for continuing to work in us, both to will and to do of your good pleasure. You, and so, Father, we open our hearts up to you once again today. Yes, you are our very own Father. Yes, Father. We are your very own children. Yes. We want to hear from our Father today yes. as the Word comes forth. Holy Spirit, I ask that you quicken the Word into the hearts of the hearers. Lord, as the word comes forth line upon line, precept upon precept, Lord, let the eyes of their understanding be enlightened. Lord, let wisdom, knowledge, Lord God, let it be poured into their hearts and let Jesus be glorified in their lives yes, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I ask that you grant me utterance in the Holy Spirit that my speech and preaching yes. will not be with enticing, persuasive words of man's wisdom, yes but in demonstration of the spirit and power so that the faith that is being built in your people will not stand in the wisdom or eloquence of a man, but in the very power of the almighty God. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Do what you want to do today. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Glory to God. Well, thanks again, everybody. Thanks for joining. Uh, Slav will join us at the end of the broadcast. Uh, to wrap up and uh, speak a blessing over you. Uh, see you later. Okay, babe. see you all later.
Amen. I have a word for you this morning and it's kind of, it's like fire shot up in my bones. It's kind of burning in my heart and I just want to deliver it uh, the way God gave it. Uh, I pray that you stick with me today uh, for, for this message through the entirety of it because you will learn something. It'll, it'll bless you and it will make a difference in your life. But perchance you have to go and you can always come back and watch this on a, you know, different uh, platforms, either on Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, or on our YouTube page where we will upload this shortly after we finish the broadcast. Today I want to talk to you about hold on to the word. Hold on to the word. And I know you may have heard this, but I want you to not assume that you know what I'm going to talk about, but to come, 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 come forth and receive this uh, with meekness. <laughs> like the Bible tells us, in James, he says, Wherefore, laying aside all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, let us receive with meekness. That's the way to receive the word of God with meekness. That means you're teachable. That means you're open. You're not coming at it like you know. You're coming at it like you don't know. And that's something that God has been, uh, has been you know, stirring in my heart of late is... Listen, the longer you've been walking with God, the more meek you ought to become because there's so much more of God to see and know that you don't want to get to the place where you think, well, I've been so many years or I'm this old or that old, I know. Can you imagine Moses, the man of God, after having walked with God and led the nation of Israel for so long, seeing God, basically seeing God face to face. The Bible described him as the meekest man on the face of the earth. The meekest. God himself said so, that he was meek. And that I believe that's why he kept getting the revelation of God and being able to stand in God's presence and to see God's face is because no matter how much of God he had seen, he knew that there was so much more to see. And he stayed meek and teachable my prayer is that you that's the way you approach the word of god with meekness say holy spirit speak to me yes i know some things but can i clue you into something what you don't know is so much more than what you do know and so sometimes it's just best just to zip it zip the lips and open the ears and open your heart so that you can receive more because God definitely has much more for us. That's why he said, blessed are those who do what? Hunger and thirst. Don't be satisfied. Don't be sati satiated. Don't be, don't be full. Don't be full because if you're full, you're only full of yourself. <laughs> don't be full. Be hungry. Stay hungry for more of God. Stay hungry for more of God. Don't allow maybe some if a, a few things are happening and you're doing one or two things and you begin to think, oh my, see me, check me out, ain't I cute? No, you don't know anything yet. The Bible even says, if a man thinks he knows, he does not yet know anything as he ought to know. Hallelujah. So I am advertising meekness here. Stay teachable. Receive with meekness the engrafted word that is able to say Yo, so I don't know why I went along that tangent, but hey, so be it. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, hold on to the word. I'm going to be talking about the word of God this morning. Because as we begin 2023, you know, at the beginning of anything is the word. <laughs> Amen. As you begin anything, it must begin with the word. Because in the beginning was the Word. And that's where we begin this morning in the book of John and in chapter 1, in John chapter 1, from verses 1 to 3. He says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him, Nothing was made that was made. Can I clue you into something? 
There is nothing that's going to manifest in your life in this 2023 that will not take origin in the word. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. So if you want to see things made this year, if you want to see things manifest this year, it must begin in the word. It must begin in and with the word of God. Because in the beginning was the word. In the beginning is the word. As you begin 2023, I want to, that's why I'm teaching this, I want to kind of uh, pull us back to ground zero and realize that it begins with the word. Amen? It begins with the word. And we must learn to value the word of God. We must learn to appreciate the word of God and understand the place that it holds. Understand that it's not just something we just read, you know, daily. It's not even just something we read to get a message. It's not even something we read so that we, you know, the, you know, faith comes. It's not something we read for this purpose and that purpose. I'm going to tell you this morning something about the word. So that in the same John chapter 1, if you look down to verse 11 and 12, he established in the first three verses that he was talking about the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. And then in verse 11, he says, He, the Word, He came unto His own. He came unto His own. And His own did not receive Him. But, verse 12, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I want you to you know, understand this because we've read this and we've kind of understood it in a certain way. We understood it to mean that, oh, you know, it's talking about salvation. He's talking about receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But I want us to look closely this morning and understand what the Bible is saying here. It says that same word that was in the beginning with God, that was God, that made all things, that word, he, he came unto his own. That means the word comes to us. Are you listening? The word comes to us. The word is coming to you this morning. The word comes to us. But it says he came unto his own and his own did not receive him. Can I say something? The first thing you must do with the word is you must receive it. That's why I was talking about meekness earlier. You must come to the word ready to receive. Ready to what? Ready to receive. That's where it begins. It begins with receiving the word that God has sent. Receiving. He says here, he came to his own. His own did not receive him. May that not be our testimony, that the word came to us, but we didn't receive him. Notice I didn't say we didn't receive it, but we didn't receive him. And that's how I want you to see the word of God this morning. You see, when you don't receive the word, you are not receiving. It's not that you are not receiving it. You are not receiving him. You are not receiving him. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, see what happens. When you receive the word, he gives you the power <laughs> to become the sons of God, even those that believe what they receive. So you receive and then you believe what you receive. So you receive the word and then you believe the word you receive. Those who receive the word that comes to them to them, God gives the power to manifest as the sons of God. I want to spend a moment and talk about that. He says, but when I received him, to them gave he the power to become 
the sons of God. That word become there, to become the sons of God in that verse. That word become, it, it, it means it gives you the power to appear in history, to come upon the stage, to appear in public. So when he says, as many as received him, to them he gave the power to do what? To appear in history, to come upon the stage, and to appear in public as the sons of God. Hallelujah. To as many as received him, to them he gives the power to appear in history. Can I say something? You will make history this year in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You will come upon the stage. You will come into the limelight. You will appear in public in 2023 in Jesus' name. Receive that and say amen. Type amen. Say amen wherever you are. Receive it. That's a word from the Lord to you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He said to as many as received him, to them he gave the power, the power to what? To become, to manifest as the sons of God. To manifest. That means to appear in history. Listen, we are going through life, but you know sometimes there comes a time when you appear in history. When it seems like you just come, up, come on the stage. You just appear in public. You've always been around, but suddenly it just seems like you just appear in public. <laughs> you just come upon the stage. You come into the light. Glory to God. Which means you manifest. But what does it take to manifest? He said, as many as receive the word, to them he gives the power to manifest as the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. So you receive, you believe, power is released to cause you to manifest, to come upon the stage, to appear in public. You don't have to try to appear in public. You don't have to try to make yourself known. You don't have to try to make things happen. All you have to do, receive the word, believe it, and power will be given you to manifest as the son of the living God. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah? There's an interesting verse. I'm going to share a few verses with us this morning. Please listen closely. There's a verse in John chapter 10 and in verse 34 to 36. This was when uh, the Pharisees were taking exception to the fact that Jesus said, I and my father are one. They took up stones to stone him. They said, blasphemy, blasphemy. How can you say you're one with God? How can you make yourself equal with God? Listen to what Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 34 to 36. Listen closely. He said, Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. Verse 35. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came. Woo! If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and scriptures cannot be broken, why say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. Listen carefully to me. Those to whom the word of God comes, that receive it and believe it, they manifest as sons of God, which is what Jesus described as gods here. We're not God, but we, are, we appear in his likeness as sons of God. Hallelujah. For who? For those to whom the word of God came. This is from the mouth of Jesus. He says, if he called them gods, Unto whom the word of God came. Oh, listen, friends. The word of God, when it comes to you, it has the capacity. Listen, can I say this? When the word of God is brought forth or sent. Listen, you have to hear this. It is not just sent to educate us. 
It is not just sent to enlighten us. It is not just sent to entertain us. It is not even just said to encourage us. Listen carefully. The primary purpose of God's word being sent is to help you manifest as a son of God. Woo, glory. It's to help you manifest as a son of God. We see that from John chapter 1 and from John chapter 10. He said, if he calls them God unto whom the word of God, the Lord, word of God came, he came unto his own, but his own did not receive him. But as many as receive him, he gives them power to become, to show up, to manifest, to come on the stage, to come in, come, come up in history as the son of God. Hello, you're a child of God through faith in Jesus Christ. But God wants you to show up in history as a son of God. Glory to God. Amen. And that happens when the word of God comes, you receive it, you believe it, and you manifest as a son of God. Doesn't the Bible say in Romans chapter 8, verse 18 and 19, in Romans 8, 18 and 19, he says this, For I reckon that the sufferings of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Can I... Can I Verse 19, he said, For the earnest expectation of the creature, of creation, is waiting. Waiting for what? Waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Woo! Glory. To put these verses in context, can I say something? You see, we, we go through, we will go through some time. Before you manifest as a son of God, there may be some suffering and some challenges involved and some difficulty involved and some things to navigate. But he says here, listen, the suffering of the present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed when you manifest as the son of God. Glory to God. And creation, history is waiting for that to happen. Amen? Creation is waiting for us to manifest as the Son of God, sons of God. Amen? Don't worry about what you're going through right now. Oh, it's, it's hard, it's tough, it's difficult, it's challenging. There's a struggle, there's a this. I'm going through this, I'm going through that. Listen, you are just, it, it's birth pains. Glory to God. It's just birth pains. It's your own Via Dolorosa. That is killing your flesh so that you can manifest as the son of God. But for that to happen, you need to receive the word that comes. Believe it. So it can release power in your life to manifest as the son of God. Listen, listen. There is inherent power in the word of God that works effectually powerfully in the life of those that believe it amen the word of god is living and powerful it says but look at what it says in first thessalonians once again please track with me here write these scriptures down and go back and meditate upon them and that's what i'm going to talk about in the second half of this is you hold on to what you've heard don't just hear be encouraged be happy and then go and let it go. I'll get to that. But see what it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and in verse 13. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13. We're talking about receiving the word of God. When the word of God comes. See what the Apostle Paul said about the Thessalonians. He says, for this cause, 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13. says, for this cause also, thank we God without ceasing. Because... When you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, watch this, which effectually works also in you that believe. 
Hallelujah. Oh, I hope you see what that looks like. He says when he went to Thessalon Thessalonica, he said when when and he preached to them, when they received the word, not just any word, when they received the word of God. I'm teaching and preaching you the word of God this morning. And then often interjected there, there are proceeding words that come forth. Declarations. Declarations being made is the word of God coming to you. When I said to you earlier that you will come into the limelight in 2023, that was a word from God. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you hear that, when you receive that word, you re they received it not as the words of Paul, <laughs> not as the words of Adi, but as it is in truth, the word of God that does what? That works effectually in those that believe. So there is inherent power in the word that you receive and believe to work effectually in you for what purpose? To cause you to manifest as a son of God. Hallelujah. I hope you're tracking with me this morning. This is a very important word. This is a very important message. Listen, believe it, receive it. Remember Mary, Mary, the Virgin Mary, minding her own business. engaged and just all she was listen all mary was looking forward to was oh i'm going to get married to this handsome young man called joseph that was what she was concerning herself with but then suddenly the word of god came Woo, glory i said glory and sometimes that's how the word of god comes suddenly <laughs> amen it's good to seek it out, to hunger and thirst for it. But sometimes it just comes. And the word of God, word of God came to her through the angel uh, Gabriel, whom God sent to bring the word of God to her. Notice the word of God came from the Father through the angel Gabriel. The word of God came. And the angel tells her, you are highly favored, uh, blessed are amongst women. And he said, what kind of salutation is this? An angel began to tell her that you have found favor with God. You will conceive in your womb the Son of God. His name shall be called Jesus. And Mary says, how can these things happen? I don't know a man. How am I going to get pregnant? And the angel says, the, 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 the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The, the power of the highest will overshadow you. And that holy thing, which will, be, you know, you, which will be conceived in you, will be called the Son of God. And what did Mary do? What did Mary do? Mary received the word. He re she received the word that came. Secondly, she believed it. She said, Behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. She believed it. She received it. She believed it. And then she conceived it. The word was conceived in her womb. You see how that works? When the word comes to you, the purpose of the word coming is so that it can manifest through you the Son of God. So that you can manifest now as the Son of God. Are you listening to me? Amen? But for that to happen, let's borrow from what happened with Mary. She, be, she received the word, she believed the word, but she held on to the word for nine months carried that word in her womb, held on to it for nine months before it was made manifest. She did what? She held on to the word. And that's where I'm going to kind of, you know, segue and talk 
about this for a bit and we'll wrap it up. So the word of God comes in the beginning. Amen. Whether that's the word you're reading and, and discovering from God's word as you meditate in the word, spend time with God, or that you hear spoken. And that's why God has given to us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. They bring forth the word of God. They teach, they minister the word of God. And under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, they're sending the word. The word is coming. They're not just there to encourage you. They're not just there to en entertain you or to, or to inform you or to enlighten you or to teach you. Yeah, they do all those things. The word does all those, all those things. But the end, the purpose is so that you can manifest as a son of God. Can I say something to you? If you're a man of God out there, woman of God, the purpose of you bringing forth the word is so that God's children can manifest as a son and daughter of God. They can come on the stage. You should always have that in mind. You are not just there to gather people around you so that you, you can say you have a good church or a big church or whatever. Those people must be manifesting. If you are sending the word, if you're sending the word, the aim, the end, the goal, the purpose of that word being sent is so that they can manifest as the sons of God. Creation is waiting for that to happen. And it begins with the word. Amen? But when the word comes to us, in order for it to work in our lives, listen, this is important. Track with me. I can say this is part B, but this is very important. In order for it to work in our lives and cause us to manifest as the sons of God, we must learn to hold on to the word. We must learn to do what? To hold on to the word. We don't just hear it, agree with it, get excited, get pumped, and then in a matter of a little while, We've let go of it. And you know why many times we let go of it? Because of other things we are trying to lay hold on. We let go of the word because, and the primary reason people let go of the word, listen carefully, this is important, is because of other things they are holding on to. Oh, hear me today. Hear me today. There are some people, they hear the word, they get so excited, they get so pumped, they shout the loudest, they cry the, the most, emotions are flowing, but then they let go. You don't see. You don't see it. You don't, you don't really see the manifestation. This is the key right here. The reason people let go of the word they heard is because they're trying to hold. Yeah, we know from the Bible of the, 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 you know, the enemy comes for the word's sake. But the enemy is only able to take, steal the word from you if you let it go. <laughs> if you let it go. And the reason people let go of their hold on the word of God, that they don't hold on to the word, is because they're trying to hold other things. This is my message to you this morning. They're trying to lay hold of or hold on to or hold other things. Too often, we are trying to hold on to so many things in our lives, which is virtually impossible and often becomes the root of stress and anxiety that people face in life. Often the root of the stress and anxiety a lot of people face in life is because they're trying to hold on to this or they're holding on to that. They're holding on to what that person did, holding on to what that person said, trying to hold on to this, trying to hold on to that. Are you listening to me? And while you're doing that, you know what you're doing? You're letting go of the word. <laughs> Listen. 
most times the more you, the, the more you try to hold on to things the tighter you try to hold on to certain things the more they slip through your fingers at other times you just can't seem to get a grip on certain things that you are trying to go for or trying to hold or at other times we are even trying to hold on to things we should let go of are you listening to me this is so important and this is at the root of why many times people hear the word but they let go of it because of other things they're trying to lay hold of or hold on to this is so important today this is so important in actuality listen to this the only thing or i should say the only one that we are supposed to hold on to is jesus who is the word of god that's why my message is hold on to the word lay hold as you receive and believe you lay hold by receiving and believing the word and then you hold fast you hold on to that word amen you hold on to that word he is the only one we're supposed to hold on to is the word of god you know why and don't miss this this is like the 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 the, the tie of the message this is why jesus is the one that holds all things in the world including all things that pertain to you he holds everything he holds if he is holding everything all i have to do is hold him oh glory hallelujah amen if he is the one who holds everything my job is to hold on to him because if I can hold on to him, if I can hold on to the word, then everything that he is holding becomes mine. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Instead of trying to hold on to seven, eight, one million things, just focus on holding on to one thing, the word. Because when you hold on to him, he holds everything else. Hallelujah. Look at this verse in Hebrews chapter 1 and verses 1 to 3. Hebrews 1, 1 to 3. He says this. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers through the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us through his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things through whom also he made the worlds. Verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. Hallelujah. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. What upholds or what holds all things together the word hallelujah he created all things in the beginning was the word and the word was with god the word was god all things were made by him he owns all things because god has appointed him as heir of everything and he upholds all things. That means he holds the whole world in his hands. He holds the... You know that song we used to sing when we were in Sunday school? You got the whole world. In your hands, you got the whole wide world. In your hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. What are you looking for in this world? It is in his hands. You hold on to him. What you need is in his hands. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Are you listening today? Amen? 
Amen. You know, there's a song. I really love this song. He said, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, oh, he holds my future. Hallelujah. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Because I know he holds my future. Why are you trying to hold your future? Hold this, hold that. He holds that. What you need to do is hold him. Glory to God. Amen? Amen? Hold him. Your hands are not big enough. Can I just help you this morning? Your hands are not big enough to hold on to everything you are trying to hold on to. It will only cause you stress. You don't have the ability, the capacity, and the bigness and the largeness to hold on to everything. You are holding on to things that happened in the past, things that this one did, you are holding on to that. Things that you want to do, you are trying to lay hold of that. You are holding on to your wife. You are holding on to your children. You are holding on to the job. You are holding on to the business. I hate Baba. When he is the one who holds all things. Listen, his hands are bigger. His reach is farther. And his grip is stronger than yours or anyone else's. I'll say that again. His hands are bigger. His reach is farther. And his grip is stronger than yours or anybody else's are you listening to me what he holds oh please listen this morning what he holds nothing can snatch away from his hands you know sometimes what we hold life can snatch it away circumstances can snatch it away we can lose it but what he holds nothing can snatch away from his hands nothing can pluck away from his hands do you realize that he holds you in his hands he said i have inscribed you in the palm of my hands he holds you in his hands and he said in john he says nothing can pluck you out of his hands glory to god his hands are big his hands are strong his hand is long longer than anything it reaches to places where you can never reach yourself. They're big enough to hold things that you can get a grip of. His mighty hands. Amen? Are you listening to me? This is so important. This is so important. It is better, listen, it is better to let him hold all the things you are trying to hold. Let him hold your spouse. Don't always try and be the one holding or holding or holding. Listen, when you commit your spouse unto God, nothing will pluck him out of God's hands <laughs> or her. Hallelujah. But when you're the one trying to hold, trying to hold, trying to hold, trying to, it's exhausting. It's stressful. <laughs> oh my God. Why don't you let him hold your children? He's like you trying to hold, trying to hold, trying to control, trying to this. It's exhausting. Hand them over to Jesus. Let him hold them. <laughs> because what he holds, nothing can snatch from his grip. He is able to keep that which you commit unto him. Why? Because his hands are strong and big enough. You are all going around trying to worry about this child, worrying about that spouse, worrying about this situation. Your possessions. Can I say, commit your possessions to the Lord. He will hold it for you. Recession won't steal what you own. Circumstances cannot snatch whatever you put in God's hands out of his hands. Are you listening? Your job, your business, your life itself. Place it in his hands. Nothing will pluck you out of his hands. And all you have to concentrate on, after you released everything to him, is just hold on to him. 
Hold on to his word. Hallelujah. I said, hold on to his word. You know, you get to a point in doing this, after a while, you get to a point that you will have so much happening that you are happening through you that you're doing, but you are not stressed or burdened about anything. Why? You are not the one holding it. He is. All you are holding is him. That is the recipe for a stressless life. Let him hold it. Let him handle it. And you just hold on to his word. Amen? You just hold on to his word. You remember Jacob in the Bible, the story of Jacob? Jacob, in Genesis, you can read, you know, in Genesis chapter 32 and 33, you get the fullness of that. Jacob, he was an example of someone who tried to hold all things together by whatever means necessary. He tried to lay hold of the birthright by whatever means. That was his modus operandi. That was him. He was always trying to hold things together. Hallelujah. But eventually, he came to the end of himself. And at that point, he let go of everything. You remember the story? When he was going back to, uh, to, Can uh, to Canaan land, and he knew that his brother Esau, from whom he had stolen the birthright, was waiting for him there. Probably waiting to avenge himself of what Jacob had done. The stress on him was incredible. The foreboding of what is to come in the near future when he sees his brother. And so, little by little, he began to let go. He let go of his possessions. He let go of his servants. He let go of his wives. He let go of his children. He sent them all. He let them go. And finally, he let go of himself and came face to face with the Lord. When he had let go of everything at the, at the brook Jabbok, the word of God appeared to him. The word of God came to him. <laughs> Remember? In the form of that angel that came, the word came. The word came. Are you following me? When he let go, when he let go, don't miss that. When you let go of all the things you're holding on to, that causing you stress, anxiety, headache, high blood pressure, trying to control everything, trying to do everything, worrying about this. How will this look? How will that happen? How will this one think about that one? How will that? I don't want that one to think that this one is this. I'm trying to hold things together. I'm trying to hold the... Who appointed you as the holder of things together? Your hands are not big enough. I try to put, you know, make sure I eat this, I do. Who appointed you? Who gave you that job? And in the midst of trying to do that, you are stressed. There is wahala. You are worried. You are thinking. You are, ah, oh my God. The best thing you can do is what Jacob did here. Release everything and everyone to him. <laughs> you want to live in peace? You want to live stress-free? Release it all. Oh, this one did this to me. You're holding on to that in your mind. That one said that to me. You're holding on to that. 
or you want to try and make sure that you cross all your T's and do everything just right to hold things together, you don't have what it takes to hold things. You're only going to put yourself under unnecessary pressure. Who told you to do that? Who gave you that job description? It is not your job to hold things together, to hold family together, to hold people together. No, it's not your job. It is his job. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is your job? Your job is to hold on to him. Glory to God. <laughs> man, this is some good teaching, man. And you are trying to hold your ministry together. Who gave you that job? <laughs> it's his job. Amen. Your job is to hold on to him. Are you listening to me? And so when the word appeared to Jacob, you know what first happened? There was a wrestling. Jacob wrestled with the word. Jacob wrestled with the word. This is why you need to hold on. Because when the... Oh, man. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if you're hearing me this morning. When the word of the Lord comes, there, there's going to be a wrestling. That's why you have to hold on. There's going to be a wrestling match, as we see from the life of Jacob. A wrestling match. In order for you to lay hold of that word, there's going to be a wrestling. It will feel like wrestling. If you haven't been there, then maybe you have never really paid attention to the word. But when the word comes, a word from the Lord, a word for your life, a word for your future, a word that will help you manifest as a son of God. Listen, there will be a wrestling. Amen. There will be a struggle. There will be a struggle. There will be things to overcome if you must lay hold of the word. We wrestle with our flesh. We wrestle with our mind. We wrestle with our feelings. We wrestle with doubts. We wrestle with fear. Amen. A wrestling. But while that wrestling is going on, what are you doing? You are holding on. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and that's what Jacob did. That wrestling was going on. But guess what? He held on. He held on. Sometimes fasting helps with this wrestling season. Because fasting helps you to gain, helps your spirit to gain upper hand over your flesh. Amen. In the process of the wrestling. Is somebody hearing me? Hallelujah. Well, that, when the wrestling was going on, Jacob did one thing right. He didn't let go of the word. Amen. He held on with his life. Amen. After some time, the rest, the rest, after some time of wrestling, he was able to prevail and laid hold of the word. And he said, You know what he said? Will not let go. <laughs> Amen. I will not let go of the word that came to me. I will not let go of the word that came to me. Amen. The word, the angel, the word that came in the form of that angel. He said, let me go. It's about to be daybreak. He said, I will not let you go until you bless me. Bless me. Can I say something? There is a blessing that is inherent in the word that comes to you. Amen. You must not let go until that blessing shows up. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. You must hold on to that word. <laughs> Amen? Amen. I will not let go until you bless me. Amen. The blessing he had been chasing and trying to apprehend by himself it finally came. He was blessed. You know what it brought him? It brought him shalom. Amen. Peace. Peace within. The struggle was over. He, had, he apprehended the word. But it also brought peace without because he found peace with Esau. He said, when a man's way pleased the Lord, he makes even his and enemies to be at peace, be with, at him. peace with him. Amen. That which was troubling your mind, that you are afraid of and all that, when you lay hold of the word, 
God will take care of that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 But also it brought him a revelation, a fresh revelation of God as his very own God. That's where he named the altar El Elohe Israel. Amen. The personal God of Israel. My personal God. Can I say something else? Listen carefully to this. Hold fast to the word and don't let go until, number one, the blessing that that word carries is released and delivered in your life. Amen. And how, well, how will you know it's released and delivered? It will bring you shalom. Peace. Shalom. Wholeness. Peace. Peace within. Peace without. Amen? Amen. Hold fast to the word and don't let go until it brings you a fresh revelation of God that changes your life. And strengthens your relationship with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, is somebody hearing me? Amen. Amen. When you hold fast to him, you are holding on to the one who holds everything in his hands. What he has for you will come to you if you hold on to him. I'll say that again. What he has for you will come to you if you hold, hold on. on to him. It's in his hands. Amen. 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 When you hold on to the word, the word will hold on to you. He will strengthen you. He will help you. That's what he says in Isaiah 41. Fear thou not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. For I am, I am your God. God. I will strengthen you. Yay. Yay. I, I will help you. Yay. I will Hold you, you with, with my, right righteous my righteous rights. Hold on to Amen. him. He will hold you. Let me finish with this, and our time is up. Well, I have to finish by saying this. But Adi, I hear you loud and clear. It's fantastic what you share. But how do I hold on to the word? How do I hold on to the word? This is the this is the action points here. <laughs> You know, you have a meeting, you know. At the end of the meeting, there has to be a takeaway. What are the action points? Otherwise, you just have a meeting and we just discuss and just go away and nobody knows what to do. So you discuss and deliver your action points so that everybody, when they're leaving that meeting, they know what they must do. These are the action points here. How do I hold on to him? Number one. Meditate on the word. A word comes to you. Don't just get excited. Get pumped. Say that was a good message. That was this. That was that. The, you have to hold on to the word. And the first thing you do in holding on to the word of God is you meditate on it. Don't think it has happened because you heard it. Now it's time to take it. To, to, to do what? To meditate on it. We can hear the word. When we hear the word, it is important that you meditate on it. The Bible says day and night. Day and night. Don't let it depart from you. Meditate on the word day and night. So that you may observe to do. We'll get to that. And then as you meditate on it, the purpose is so you can believe it and eventually act upon it. Listen, rather than go... Oh, man, somebody listen to me. This is a word from somebody. When a word comes to you from the Lord, when the word of God comes to you, know from today that the purpose of that word is to cause you to show up, to manifest as a son of God. The devil doesn't want that to happen. He doesn't want you to manifest as a son of God. You know what he's going to do? When that word comes, he's going to bring other things for you to preoccupy you. So you can be meditating on those things. Rather than meditate on the circumstances, on the offenses, on the problem, on the evil report. Thereby holding on to those things. Can I say something? Whatever you are meditating on is what you are holding on to. Whatever you are meditating on is what you are holding on to. Because that's how you hold on. 
You meditate. Someone did something to you three years ago. You are still thinking about meditating. No, you are holding on to it. Doctors gave you a negative report. And all day long, you are thinking about, hey, hey, this sickness. Talking about it, thinking about it. You are holding on to it. What are you supposed to hold on to? The word of God. <laughs> Meditating on that. Replacing those negative, destructive thoughts with the word. Meditating on it day and night. Day and night. Day and night. Meditate on what he said. Meditate on, until you believe it. And then after you believe it, meditate on it until it shows up. Meditate on the word. That's Amen. number one. How do I hold on to the word? Where the message is hold on to the word. Hold on to Jesus. How do I hold on? Meditate on the word. Joshua 1.8. Psalm 1 verses 1 to 3. Go read and, uh, those verses. Meditate on the word day and night. What are you doing? You're holding on to it. You heard a word. You heard me say this morning, you will, you will burst on the scene. You will appear in history in 2023 in Jesus' name. Amen. That's a word from the Lord. When you leave here, go and take that word. Not that's just something Brother Adi said, but as the word of the Lord for you. And then go and meditate upon it. What does that mean? And from scriptures. Are you listening? Amen? Amen. Meditate upon the word. Number two, way of holding on to the word is what you pray the word of god pray the word of god pray the word of god pray the word though we make our requests known to god in prayer we must let our prayers revolve more around what we believe and not what we see oh is somebody hear that some people their prayers revolve more around what they see so when they're praying, they're talking about what they see. They're talking about what is going on. They're talking about what they see. No, your prayers should revolve more around what you believe. Amen. The word of the Lord. Pray the word that has come to you. Amen. Pray the word that has come to you. Amen? Amen. Don't pray the circumstances. Pray the word. When you pray this way and believe that you receive. Amen. The Bible says that scriptures read about that. Philippians 4, 6. You know, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, make your request known to God. But it says in 1 John chapter 5, this is the confidence we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, which is His word, He hears us. And if He hears us, we, we know the petition. that we have what we have asked of Him. Oh, and it says in Mark 11, 20, uh, 22, 24, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Amen. Wherefore, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. So once again, pray the word. Pray the word. Let your prayers revolve around what you believe. The word you believe, not the circumstances you behold. Amen. 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 And once you believe, you receive. Now, this is where confession comes in. Some people put the cart before the horse. Some people put the what? Cart before the horse. What do I mean by that? They have a problem. And they just say, I'm confessing the word. I'm confessing, I'm confessing, I'm confessing. What are you confessing? This is the way it works. First thing, you receive a word from God. Meditate on that word. Meditate on it until it builds faith in your heart, number one. Then when faith comes to your heart, pray the word in faith. And believe you receive what you pray. Then when you believe you receive what you prayed, now begin to what? Confess. Confess what you believe you Wait. received. Do you understand how that works now? Confess. What are we doing? We're holding on to the word. Amen. Confess what you believe you received. Amen? Amen. And hold fast to that confession. Do what? Hold fast to that confession. Why? He is faithful. That made the promise. Amen. The Bible says in Hebrews, 
because you have need of what endurance yes, so that after you've done the will of god you will obtain the promise amen 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 he says he that will come will come but the just must live by faith amen so confess the word and lastly it doesn't stop with confession no if we must really, really truly hold on to the word the last step is you must obey or be a doer of that word you must act on it Woo, glory amen james 1 25 says but be ye do what what doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves for he that hears the word of god and does not do it is like a man beholding his natural face in the mirror and forgets immediately and, you know beholds himself goes his way and immediately forgets what he looks like but he said whosoever looketh the of liberty. holds on <laughs> to the word the perfect law of liberty and continues therein. you see continue hold on and continues therein he being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work what, what happens to that person this man shall be blessed in all of Ooh, his the ways. blessing will be released remember i said there's a blessing inside the word so when you've meditated on that word to where it brings faith you understand you apprehend you see what god is saying to you in that word then you pray it pray it and believe you receive and then after you pray confess it and hold fast your confession I still feel the pain. Hold fast your confession. Things have not changed. Hold fast your confession. Why? I believe I receive. Amen? Be a doer of the word of God is number four, not number three. Is number four. Pastor Fred, I appreciate you jotting those things down for me. That's a blessing. Once again, the first one, how do I hold on to the word? Meditate on the word. Number two, pray the word. Number three, confess the word. And then number four, be a doer of the word. Be a doer of the word. Amen. You cannot, babe, you cannot meditate on the word, pray the, pray the word, confess the word, and then after all that, let it go. By not doing the word. So what was the point of meditating on the word and praying the word and confessing the word if I'm going to do all that and then just let it go? No, you have to complete the journey by doing what? By being a doer, doer of, the word. of the word. But the honest truth is this, and I promise you this. If you would take time to, with meekness, receive the word of God and believe it, amen, and then meditate upon it, pray the word, confess the word, and act on the word or obey the word or do the word i promise you you will manifest as the son of god amen you will show up you will come on the stage of history you will come out of obscurity oh 20, can i can i prophesy this morning 2023 is your year of coming out of obscurity in the name of Jesus. Amen. The world has been waiting for you to show up, to manifest, to Amen. come on the stage, to appear in history. Amen. To appear in public. Listen, yes, you. some of you have been faithful in private. Some of you have been faithful in secret. Some of you have been faithful to God. It is time for you. Ah, come on. Somebody lift Amen. your hand and receive it. Amen. It is time for you to appear in public. Amen. I receive it for myself in the I name of Jesus. It, Jesus it is time for you to appear in public. Amen. Come on, say amen. Type amen. Whatever you have to do, do this morning. I am declaring the word of the Lord. I believe this morning and I declare to you that it is your year. To appear in public. Amen. It is your year to appear in history. Amen. It is your year to come on the stage. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything I declare I receive for myself. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. How will it happen? Those to whom the word comes. And they receive it. 
may believe it. Amen. To them, he gives the power, to be called. the right, the go ahead Amen. to manifest as the sons of God. Amen. Are you ready? Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready for that in 2023? Take heed to this word. Take this word. Don't just say, brother, I had a good message. Take this word and then go and do what I just told you. Amen. So you hold on to it until the blessing inherent in the word becomes a reality in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Are you blessed this morning? Yes. Are you blessed this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Father, we Hallelujah. praise you this morning. We give glory. We thank we you for your you. precious holy word. Thank you. Lord. We thank you that you're a speaking God. Yes, Father. That you communicate your will, your plan, and your purpose to us through your word. Yes. Lord. And you have purpose this year to cause your children to come on the stage of history thank you Lord. to appear in public thank from you. hiding father thank you for the word that you spoken to them and that you will speak to them thank, thank or that you, you have already spoken to them i pray this morning that as they take heed to this and learn to hold on to you yes father. and hold on to your word yes Lord. that they will see the manifestation of their lives bringing glory to you and showing as the Son of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, Father. I give you all the praise. Yes, Lord. Receive it now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good glory. Hallelujah. Wow, what a word. Hold on to the word of God. Don't let it go. Believe it. Confess it. Pray it and do the word. I don't know if I said meditate. Right. Meditate on pray. the word. Pray, confess, and then act on the word. And as you do that, you will see the manifestation of what you're praying, what you're believing, what you're expecting, what you're anticipating to come to pass. And this is our year of stepping into all that we've been believing for is our year of overflow, our Amen. year of increase, our Amen. year of abundance, Amen. our year of manifestation. Amen. And so everything that you've been believing for and you've been praying over the years, it's time to take it. It's time for the harvest to come. Amen. So let's just go back. Let's go meditate on this message. Let's listen to it. Let's play it and let's act on it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God I, see you. You. I see you, Somia. Uh, one of my students from Bangalore, Somia, uh, God bless you. Thank you for watching. I see you. Uh, thank you for thanking me. I do remember you. Uh, God bless you. And for all the others that I may not be able to see, Pastor Fred, thank you so much for staying on and just being encouraging and helping and, um, you know, putting scriptures and enumerating the points. Thank you for doing that. God bless you. For everybody else that's joined us today, we're so grateful for your presence here. Thank you for being here. But perchance you are out there, you on this broadcast, and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You haven't received him. You haven't received the, the Son of God. You haven't received the power to become the Son of God, to become a child of God. If that is you, and I say something to you, the word has come to you today. Will you receive him? Because mm -hmm. so as many as receive him, then then gives him power to become the sons of God. You want to be a child of God? Mm -hmm. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you want to receive him right now? You can do so. The Bible says if you believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for your sins, and that on the third day he rose from the dead and you confess it with your mouth, you shall be saved. That's how you get saved or get born again. You call on the name of the Lord. Hears you, he comes to you, he saves you. Amen. If that's Amen. you and you want to do that this morning, I just want you to, I want to lead you into that. I want you to say a very simple prayer. Repeat it after me. The reason you repeat it after me is because you have to confess it. You have to speak it out of your mouth. The power is in your tongue. And so just repeat this after me. 
Say Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I believe. I believe. That Jesus is the Son of God. That Jesus is the Son of God. That He came to the earth. That He came to the earth. He died on the cross for my sins. He died on the cross for my sins. Shed His precious blood. Shed His precious blood. To wash me clean. To wash me clean. On the third day. On the third day, you raised him from the dead. You raised him from the dead. I believe today. I believe today that Jesus is alive. That Jesus is alive. And Jesus. And Jesus. I invite you. I invite you to come into my heart. To come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my Savior. I give my life to I you. I give my life to you. Thank you for saving Thank me. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you just called on the name of Jesus, you are saved congratulations welcome to the family of god power was released to make you a new creation made after the image and likeness of god a child of god congratulations heaven is rejoicing we rejoice with you thanks for making that decision you will never regret it the moment you said that prayer all your sins your past was wiped and washed away a fresh clean start is yours a brand new creation you are in the name of Jesus. Let us know what you did. Write to us at our uh, ministry email, ambassadiinternational15 at gmail.com. Write to us. Let us know you gave your heart to Jesus. But find yourself a, a Bible-believing church where you live. Find yourself a Bible-believing church and go there. Get plugged in. And you will have pastors that will teach you the Word, that will bring forth the Word of God that is designed to help you progressively manifest in this earth as a son, as a son of God. Find such a church, get plugged in, get into a community of faith where you can grow in your knowledge of God and in your faith. Hallelujah. Also, get yourself a Bible and read your Bible daily. The word of God is so important. Read it and receive it as God speaking to you. It will change your life from glory Amen. to glory to glory. If you do these things, and thirdly, pray every single day. Talk to God, converse with God, commune with God. Have a conversation with Him like you would with you know somebody, anybody else. But knowing that He hears you, He's close to you, and He has all that you need in His hands. Talk to Him. Amen? If you Amen. do these things, I promise you, Within the next few months, before the end of 2023, you will not recognize yourself Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. by reason of the glory that will be coming out of your life. Praise God. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. It's such a blessing to be able to bring forth the word of God. I hope it you know, did something in you. But I know that as you go back and do what we've said, meditate upon it, it will do even much more. Amen. That's what we're supposed to do. Uh, before we leave this morning, I just want to remind you once again about my book. Can you pick it up and talk about it, babe? Go ahead. The House That Prayer Built. It's an excellent resource on prayer. I encourage you to get a hold of it. Read it for yourself and give it to your loved ones and those that don't love you as well. It will help them to love you when they read the book. Amen. It will help you to um, intensify and um help you along in building your relationship with god so like i said let's be intentional this year if you want to be intentional about prayer this is a resource to, to get it's good for you for your personal devotion it's good as a bible school um tool it's good as a bible study tool it's good as a prayer book for your church for your life group you know i mean there are different things that you know this can be useful and as you get it and read it and share with people and talk about it you will get to grow it's available everywhere where books are sold um, um, primarily you could reach out to our publisher um, book store.bookbaby.com and it's also available on Amazon on target.com walmart.com Barnes and Noble and all online retailers the Hard copy is available as well as the Kindle, the ebook, the ebook version of it. So I encourage you to grab one and be blessed. And when you do read it, I know a lot of people have read the book and you're yet to read a, re a review. It will be a blessing for us. It will help um, the start of the book if you would actually take time to leave a review. 
so when you do read it please take a moment to leave a review on amazon or wherever you got it from and there's an opportunity for you to leave a review on there thank you god bless you amen Amen. That's a blessing. And uh, thanks once again for joining us. If you desire to um, partner with us in the ministry God has committed to us, you can do so, uh, you know, one of several ways. Number one, primarily, we ask that you pray for us. We covet and value your prayers. We're constantly praying for you, taking you before the Lord, you know, crying out to God on your behalf. We don't just say that. I wouldn't say that if I wasn't doing that because I don't want to be pretentious. But we're always praying for you, asking God to make you worthy of the call upon your life Amen. and fulfill the good pleasure of his goodness and his work of faith with power in your life so that the name of Jesus Christ is glorified in you and you are glorified in him. We're constantly praying for you. And love perfects that way concerns you. But if you would love us to pray specifically for you, there's something that you're challenged with, you're going through, you need an agreement, please write to us at Ambassade International 15 at gmail.com. Ambassade International 15, that's 15 at gmail.com. And we will reply, we'll respond to you, but most importantly, we will uphold, stand with you in the place of prayer. And so that's one of the ways you can partner with us. Secondly, you can communicate with us. We love to hear from our partners. Uh, your, what you send to us, it may be a one-liner, a two-liner, but it's very encouraging as we journey on in obeying the call of God upon our lives. Amen. And thirdly, you can partner with us financially. You can sow a seed into our ministry to help us to carry on doing the work he said they said they that preach the gospel must live by the gospel you know that the you know you don't muzzle the ox that treads out the corn amen that the laborer is worthy of his wages and we know that god supplies our needs but if you want to partner with us that way and so a seed into our ministry one time or become a regular partner however the lord leads you amen please do so amen. and do so in one of uh several ways uh paypal you can uh, do through PayPal. The email address for that is aadebanjo at gmail.com. aadebanjo at gmail.com. Uh, through Venmo, you have at adi-adebanjo. Uh, on Zelle, for those in the USA, we have uh, the email for Zelle is uh, ministry email international 15 at gmail.com. Let me just spell that out once so you can hear it. You can play this back. If you want to get the fullness of it, it's A M B A S S A D E International 15 at gmail.com. So the only thing that you really don't know how to spell there is the ambassade. It's A M B A S S A D E International 15 or one uh, word at gmail.com. That's for Zelle. If you want to wire money, uh, wire the money to us, or you know, deposit um, into a bank account, direct deposit to our bank account via wire transfer, or local deposits. It's the name is Adi Abusola Adi Banjo, TD Bank NA. Account number is four three three zero three seven zero four six four four three three zero three seven zero four six four. The routing number is zero three one two zero one three six zero. Uh, ABA number is 03110-1266 and the SWIFT code is NRTHUS33XXX. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. I know the time is fast spent. For those of you who stuck with us from the beginning to the end, we appreciate you. Once again, Pastor Fred, thank you so much. Love you. Praying for you and for River Church Philly Cam. Amen. That God is sending Holy Ghost filled laborers to RCPC. Uh, and uh, that the work of God will flourish in and through you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. For uh, moms, thank you so much for joining. Mommy Adibanjo, Mommy Shaoniku, uh, and for all the others. For our family from India, several of you have joined on um, Instagram and through Facebook. We love you. We appreciate you. Ab Abhishek Banerjee, um, I saw you My earlier. My sister, Mary Bell Ortiz, I yeah. love you. Praise God. Miss Maribel, I miss you. I look forward to seeing you very soon. And my sister <laughs> Lakshmi Mondal and um, 
uh, Iguang uh, Sile in uh, Nagaland. God bless you all. I just we appreciate your your and, partnership and ever faithful sister Susie. Susie. Good to see you. I think I've missed you a couple of weeks now. Great to see you joining. It just showed me that you're watching right now. Good to see you, sister Susie. Love you. Praise God. Thank you all so much. God bless you. Uh, until we see you again next Friday on our episode of Ambassador Live, we bless you in the name of Jesus and we declare that this will be the best year of your life yet. You will manifest this year like you've never done so before in the name of Jesus. All that you've done in secret will be manifested in the open in Jesus' name. Amen. Go to church this Sunday. Never forget every Sunday. Make it a make it a uh, a point to go to church in Jesus. God bless you. God we bless you. you. We love you. Good to see you. Bye for now. Bye.